Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we have gathered together in this online fashion that we might mark the beginning of the season of Lent with this pre-recorded Ash Wednesday service. This service is centered around scripture, around silence, around song, and around prayer. We invite you to enter this time, to gather in the Lord's presence as we begin our journey to the cross. A reading from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been seen from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me, with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts, not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your children, O God, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? reading from the Psalms. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bowls will be offered on your altar. A reading from 2 Corinthians. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown, and yet we are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. As Jesus says, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. An invitation to observe a holy Lent. Beloved people of God, every year at the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal mystery. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We begin our journey to Easter with the signs of ashes. The ancient sign speaks of the frailty and uncertainty of human life and marks the penitence of this community. I therefore invite you in the name of Christ to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by works of love, and by meditating on God's Word. Now let us bear before God, our Creator and Redeemer, and confess our sin. Let us pray. As we do so, I invite you, when you hear the phrase, gracious God, to respond, have mercy upon us. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We have not listened to your call to serve as Christ served us. 
We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess to you, O God, all our past unfaithfulness for the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives. Gracious God, have mercy on us. For our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, gracious God, have mercy on us. For our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, gracious God, have mercy on us. For our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work, gracious God, have mercy on us. For our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, gracious God, have mercy on us. Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done, for our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Gracious God, have mercy on us. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, gracious God, have mercy on us. For our waste and pollution of your creation, our lack of concern for those who come after us, gracious God, have mercy on us. Restore us, O God, and show us your love. Turn to us in your mercy and redeem us. Now as a sign of the repentance of our congregation, our commitment to new life in Christ. If you have ashes, I invite you to place them on your forehead in the shape of a cross. If you do not have ashes, please Make a similar sign, even just with your hand. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence. For it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.